The intensity of the new music that you've made, um, that compression doesn't have a shit show and hit. Is there a future for Fallout Boy at any given time, even when we don't see you around? We hope so, and we assume you love each other, and there's endless creative opportunities, but does the future lead to a place like this? I would never assume that. Not because I don't think you're good enough, or that you don't want it, but man, life is funny, you know? Sometimes we just lose the edge, or sometimes we get confused, or life takes over, and we mature, and we've seen it. What I'm not used to is a band like you being around for as long as you have making the album that sounds like your first best album ever. Dang, man, thank you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Sounds like the first time you got it right. Thanks. That's awesome. It's crazy. I was watching, uh, before we started working on the record, I was watching um, Some Kind of Monster. And it's some. You're welcome, by the way. Did you like my cameo in it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do a great in it. Me with hair, right? Me with hair. I had hair. Yeah, that's, that's when great. we met you. You had that hair. I had that yeah. hair. Yeah. Somehow in my head, I always thought that they were like a band for like 30 or 40 years. I don't really know why. I But I was like, oh, we've been a band the same length that they were a band when they shot this. Yeah. Which is just a really weird mirror to like kind of like look into and like. Yeah. And think about the. Because kind of what you were saying, you know, the thing about, you know, do they get along? It's it's a there's so many things that have to line up, you know, for for a band to make a record at this point, let alone a good one, you know. Um, you have every reason not to, really. Yeah, and and you know, you kind of expect it, you know. When I I told my parents twenty years ago, twenty two years ago, that I was going to take a semester off, you know, and and see what the band thing did, and that was it, you know. And and so, you know, it's it's kind of crazy to still. I'm pitching a reality show where he goes back to school. <laughs> it's going to be immediately great. after this. So the semester <laughs> is over. <laughs> That's a great idea, actually. I'm trying to poke holes in it. It's pretty fail safe. <laughs> what, what college were you at? Uh, I wasn't. I was. Uh, this was. I was. My my mom was basically like. Uh, I'm not subsidized, you know, like you got to get a job or do something. I'm not going to. Great parent, great parental you know, advice. And, and she's like, so, you know, go to college. I'll, I'll help with that. But if you're not going to college, you know, you're on your own. You're on your own. I graduated high school and we did our first tour like two weeks later. Was our was our was a, was a great tour? It was a it was illustrious. <laughs> it was you know a legendary I mean? tour. Yeah, so it was a fucking terrible tour. Yeah. And nobody showed up and whatever. But you knew. Yeah, you knew. We had big ambitions, way way larger than we should have had. Based on what? Ah, oh, man, it, there was definitely. I mean, Chicago is not like you know waking up in the winter and it's like. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, totally. So where's it coming from? You get and dig out your car. Yeah. You know, and you're like. I always knew that, like. When Patrick sang the first time, I was like, this is very special. And I was like, if we can craft something around this, it will be very special. And to me, I would liken it to watching, and I can say this because I'm not Patrick, obviously, but like you're when I, watching kind of like a, a, a great basketball player in high school or something. You Like, you know it's there. You just got to kind of build it around them. You know what I mean? Did you know at the time that you were going to be so instrumental in helping to unlock that with the words? Uh, No. No, because we weren't. That's we didn't even do that at first. I was trying to. I I wanted to write songs. That was the whole thing. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know anything about singing. I didn't care about singing. It was just one of those things where it was a means to an end. I I was showing them my songs, and they're like, "Oh, well, you do you want to sing?" I'm like, "Yeah, but what what do you think of the song?" You know, that was the thing. And so, and I didn't really even care about my lyrics, and that was I think obvious. <laughs> and and Pete was like, Can, "Maybe I maybe maybe I should do this part." <laughs> you know so I mean? interesting. It's so interesting. And this is a. And also, we, we are going to talk about Annie and Joe, because they're playing on this album is just out of out of their skin. But um, but but the dynamic between the two of you has been we've experienced it before. You know, we've experienced it before. Great writers and great singers come together. You know, obviously, most famously and notably Elton and Bernie, and this idea of of having separation to be able to collect your thoughts, having separation to absor absorb those thoughts and then bring emotional performance and, and, and resonance to it is it's rare, but when, when you get it right, something fucking magic about that separation. Yeah, it's really blind luck to, to find that person, you know, to find somebody that you write with like that. And when you do, it's like, it's, it's amazing because there's a, cause like I said, the whole point for me was I wanted to write songs. That was the, I like composing. I like composing music. I'm not one of those people that keeps a journal and has like all of these deep thoughts that I want to share with the world. I, I have to make music. And, um, and there's something about when Pete sends me words, it's like, 
Christmas morning, you know, and I open them up and it's like, I don't even write. I'm just reading them and I just, and this, and it writes itself. I did the same you know? thing when I got the lyrics sent through at the same time as the music, I read mm. the mm. first two songs before I even listened to mm. the music. I don't think I've ever done that. Oh, wow. That's cool. And I, and so I read the words to love from the other side before I played it. And I almost texted you. In fact, I think I saved the text that I didn't send because I wanted to show that I almost texted you. <laughs> yeah. Just saying, dude, I mean, I haven't even heard this music yet. And I just want to say lyrically, like, you've just outdone yourself. Oh, that's really sweet. In terms of what you captured. And then I pressed play. <laughs> and I was like, fuck me. Like, the whole band is doing that. Everybody is stepping up. So my question is, we, as we fast forward to right now, the most important thing, this moment right here, what do you put that down to? I mean, honestly, t for me personally, coming out of the pandemic um, and just being quarantined or with my family, it's like, if we're going to do this and like, I, if I'm going to leave again, yeah, if I'm going to leave again and if we're going to go, because I was like really nervous about leaving and really, I didn't want to leave my family. We got like way tighter and stuff like that. I was like, it's got to be for me, at least it's got to be with purpose. Like, it can't just be like. This is my big job. show here. Yeah, it just didn't. F yeah, it it couldn't be that anymore to me. By the way, it's a great job, and you can continue it <laughs> because what you've achieved before will con will keep you in, in employment. But it's to your point. It's, it it gets less and less inspiring by the day. Yeah, it's not like the dream you signed up for. You know, you want to do it for the reasons. You know, like you anybody who loves the thing that they do, their craft, you want to do it for the reason you originally loved. You know, and you it's great actually to me to have these moments where you can like reorganize your the the apartment of your mind or whatever you're like you're like oh shit like i'm not doing this because like i've just started doing this because like i did it every day and it's like i always turn left i always now my neural pattern is i do this and yeah. it's like why you know what i mean like life is short and long so <sighs> it's a big question at, at, at our age why man why? well and that was and the why you know, it's funny. That was that. unfair of me to include you in my age bracket, by the way. <laughs> I apologize. I'm up there. <laughs> but the, um, it's funny thinking about the why and, and, and kind of what you're saying, the, the getting out there. There's, a, there's, a, um, there's an element that, you know, people would ask me about Foley, which was a weird record that we did that, you know, it's, it's, it's either it's a love or hate it record, you know. Some people love that record, some people don't. And, and people will ask me like, what did you do? Why is that one different? There was a feeling that I kind of wanted to get, I, I, not, I don't want it to sound anything like that record, but I wanted to get back to this feeling that we had when we were making it, which was like, I don't know how much longer this will last. You know what I mean? Like, like when we did that record, you know, the emo thing had, we, had this zeitgeist explosion moment and we got like swept up in it and but then it's like, but I don't know if this is still going to, I don't know if we're going to be pop stars tomorrow. So this is the last time I can guarantee that someone's going to front the bill for me to hire orchestra, you know, like whatever. That, yeah. and, and so there was an urgency of like kind of just wanting to get your idea on tape because who knows, you know, I knew, you know, again, growing up in Chicago or whatever, most of the bands that I knew from around there that had, you know, they had the major label record you know, it, it maybe had a hit and then they maybe kind of fell off or whatever. Like that's, that's what I was used to. So I expected that. So I was like, it was like the last, this might be the last record I ever make. <laughs> it's, it's so funny you talk about this because this really is at the heart of the psychology behind the, the, the artist and the relationship you have with your own, with your own existence, which is that there's a system in place, which just by the very nature of, of, of introducing an idea of like, you're signed, you're dropped. <laughs> creates an anxiety and an insecurity in your psychology, which means that even after all the hits and all the tickets and the fact that Fallout Boy, even if you didn't make this incredible, groundbreaking, amazing, massive album, or already a legacy band, you're still wondering whether or not you're going to be <laughs> fired. And it's fucked up. But I mean, it's like kind of the similar to like when I'm, I'll be, you know, I play fantasy football and I'm like, oh, like Derrick Henry, they're like, you know, who's maybe the top five running backs, you know, of our modern times, like they'll be like trash, trash, trash. And then he take, and then he, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's so fickle. You know what I mean? It's like the, 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 the feeling is so. In athletics, it's different because your body will eventually decide for you. Yeah. Whereas in the arts, no one could tell Bowie, mm. you're done. Mm. I mean, and, and I thought of Bowie just now because you talk about 
this might be the last chance I get to, to some, for someone to pay for me to experiment yeah. like this. Bowie didn't think that way, but he had a similar feeling, I guess, toward the end of his life, which, which was, if this is nearing its end, I'm going to make a abstract, freewheeling, modern jazz, crazy album. Mm. I'm going to do something on Broadway. I'm going to do all these things. Well, because that's the thing is that like hits are great. Hits are fun. Hits are fun because because people resonate with something you did. That's a really rewarding feeling when you write a song and people love it. But you don't know what a hit is. Everybody thinks they do and everybody thinks they know how to like make one, but no one does. Everybody just kind of everybody just kind of bumbles through it. And when you chase a hit, you make garbage, right? Like it's when it's most of the stuff that you most of the stuff that really hits is the stuff when you're just feeling inspired or whatever and you're just having, you know, like I, it's weird, and I can say that now after having written a bunch of songs, and been like, "That's a hit," and you're like, "Oh, that's not that's that didn't make the record," <laughs> you know, like whatever. And um, and you know, so it becomes this thing where you're like, you kind of have to make something just to express yourself. And and like I said, I don't have that um, that that propulsion. I I'm. I'm a, I'm like a clockmaker or something. Like I need someone needs to buy the clock. Someone needs to order the clock, and then I will make that thing. But if you but if Pete doesn't send me lyrics, I don't write a song. You know, and so I you know I sat around for years waiting for these lyrics. You know, I was just building up like, please send me something. Please send me something this good. You know, like something I can. You know, and then he and then he sends these words, and you're like, you know. I mean, I had a friend though. I think you know, kind of when the rock music kind of re-entered the mainstream and there's these festivals and I had a friend who was like you guys need to make Sugar We're Going Down part two and this person is pretty much almost always wrong like uh, gut feeling wrong and I was like <laughs> that is exactly what we need I love how you have a friend who is the, who is the, the wrong, worst instincts the wrong, of anyone always you turns know. wrong yeah it's great. I think we all have that friend. <laughs> you know I mean, what I mean? You, I mean it's, dude, it's a real test of friendship, but it's a beautiful friendship. Totally. <laughs> and you need to keep them around. It's like a canary in a coal mine. Like, you, 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 you check. You know what I mean? You check. You and when this friend <laughs> says this to you and you know their instincts are totally off, do they know that you think their instincts are totally no, off? Man, that's not like, at all. Because I keep them, I keep them so you in, go, in, yeah. employed in the friendship. So, so I'm like, you, so you no, know, that's the so first you, single. Okay, <laughs> cut that record. Cut that song. It's not on the record. Interesting. So you say, Joe... I know it's not Joe. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, I'm joking. Be no, but you say, dude, that's a great idea. Just, be, but you know, it's a terrible yeah. idea. I, well, I kind of like, yeah, 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 totally. And I think even beyond that, I'd had people come up to me, you know, in the airport or something, and they'll say stuff like, "I grew up with you guys, like, you know, like." save rock and roll and i'm like you grew up with a, like what <laughs> so that's like yeah. that just like happened. i feel like i felt old when we made that you know yeah, like yeah. it's and or someone will be like andy hurley like i play drums because of andy hurley i'm like the dude that i like met you know like who, we were drawing snakes around each other's necks with magic mark like that you but like time does that Wait, you don't what yeah i know it's like it's so stupid we're drawing fake tattoos you on each other. Tattoos, and, and yeah. you, you chose to draw snakes around each other's neck That's yeah amazing. it's so weird yeah i don't know if you know the snakes are cool yeah, especially around the neck yeah. <laughs> so stupid but it's like you know james bond or metallica like the people have all these different inception points so you can't just make a full throwback thing you know and yeah. I, I think patrick had originally wanted to work with neil avron who'd done our first two big records and yeah I was like a little nervous about it and I called Why? Neil. Why? I just didn't want to like I I think to me personally there's a real danger to when guys who have like swimming pools or something try to go and make a throwback record. It often sounds like guys who have like swimming pools making a throwback <laughs> record. You know what I mean? To me. And so I just didn't want to do that and I reached out to Neil and Neil was like I'm into it. We cannot make Old Fallout Boy. And I was like, I'm in. I can't believe this is the first thing. It was like magical that that was the first thing he said to me. Yeah, well, the thing was that because I think, you know, there's a there's a anxiety about working with a producer because there's what they do, but there's also what you do with them. You know what I mean? Like the, a producer sounds, you know, a producer imparts a certain sound on your on your thing, but there's also, you you know, you deliver something to them. And I think there was a fear that, you know, that I was going to show up and do, and, you know, just, just because of the comfort of it, be like, you know, oh, I'm going to do a, you know, pop punk record or something. And, um, <laughs> amazing. Exactly. Um, <laughs> that was my impression yeah, of like 2000. Yeah, 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 it was good. I liked it. Um, you know, I think that was a, that was a fairly valid concern that I could fall back into that. But I had this, I had been, it's funny. I was thinking about how Neil has 
changed and grown since he worked with us last. You know, I mean, he's he's like a like multi Grammy winning, you know, mixer for Broadway stuff, and and you know, and he's and he's ma- and mixed and mastered all these. Big, he grew like, as heavy far records. away from where you yeah, were as exactly. you grew as far yeah. as far and away. And also, from like exactly. when he originally was producing us, it was literally like. He was our dad on the West Coast and was like, listen, you guys, you guys will all get along. Everybody will be friends after this yeah. recording, you know, like it's, yeah. it was just, you know. And so I, I kind of had this hunch and I, I was like, we got to go to Neil because, because I had this hunch that like, whatever we bring him, he will, he will do well. So it's a matter of what we, we have to bring him the right stuff, but he's. I'll make a confession. Patrick's the guy, the gut. He's the gut guy. He's, <laughs> he's, the, the, good guy. Guy. he's the good guy. Always, always <laughs> the worst <laughs> choices. No, but you're telling us all that like we don't know that. Yeah, it's obvious. Here's the truth, Pete. Yeah. Everybody knows you're an OCD yeah. anxiety yeah. guy. I'm not. I, totally. Takes one to know one, bro. Totally. Totally. We're the overthinkers. Yeah. Such an overthinker. But yeah. uh, one of the things about uh, working with Neil, um, the first thing he said to me, um, I called him. So, so uh, it's a little little you know, inside baseball, now outside baseball. Uh, I was, I was, uh, I got COVID and I was sitting in a hotel, I was quarantined and I had nothing to do and I'm sitting there. Were you, was you, this when you were watching the Green Day play the show across the car park in the stadium you were supposed to be playing that night? Oh yeah, yeah. it was <laughs> maddening. Yep, I, it's maddening. I'm which si- city was that? We was in multiple cities. We did it, uh, Oh my God, you had touring COVID. New York, so- <laughs> Boston, and, uh, uh, Washington DC. Yeah, it was in DC. So I'm sitting there in DC and I'm looking over this. We would ride on a COVID like a sick bus. We'd get <laughs> yeah, on with yeah, our, our gloves right. on and masks. Yeah. And yes. I like we like triple mask to get in and out and stuff. And, and like was, when you walk on, it's like doom music. No, it was terrifying. It was it was off and COVID was horrible. Horrible. And and so I'm sitting there miserable and watching this show that that we should be playing because that was that was the one like you said it's like literally overlooking the show so i'm like Mm. this is miserable i'm I'm, i have a pizza that i can't taste and i'm like and i call neil and i was like hey you want to do the do a record and he's like you know and and he had so many concerns and the first thing he said to me and and this stuck with me was he's like what are you writing about Mm. He didn't care at all about the sound. He didn't care because he because we've worked together enough. He knows like we'll figure out the sound. We'll figure yeah. out we'll figure out how to make it sound good. He's like, what is Fall Out Boy writing about? And you were like, hello reception. Could you put me through to room four hundred six? Wince, Pete <laughs> Wince. Exactly. That's his problem. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> what name is this guy staying under again? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. I don't know. Yeah. I Irving don't know. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> but it's a great question and it's actually yeah. a rare question because most producers and to your point people who work in the sonic l- landscape would go man where are we going to take this musically and mix wise and oh, this so much has changed since we last worked together to take it back to the most important question that anyone should ask themselves before they make music with words that's the most important question yeah and, and it was it was again that why everything went back to why which i loved i loved that everybody at every point in this joe um, frankly, was kind of like hesitant to do a record, and he's like, and I, and I was like, well, what, what, what are you hesitant about? He's like, well, I, I, I want to make something that we like savor. I want to make something that like we go in and we, and we really spend the time. You know, it, it's one of those things where technology, it's amazing how fast you can make a record now, and it's glorious, and sometimes it's so spontaneous and amazing. And you leave the studio like that was crazy. We've written songs before, you know, and and recorded them in the span of an hour and been like that was. I, that was incredible. But there is something about the like, you know, like like an old like your grandmother making dumplings or something and you know everyone's just made lovingly or whatever like like Joe was like that was his condition of making a record and I'm like, yeah, okay, totally. Like I like make a record where we spend, you know, we spend days on mic chew placements. Chew your you know? food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, chew your food. Like I get it and it and you've done it and it's um the, the scale of ambition on this album, and by the way, Neil was right, because the way it sounds is fucking awesome. Like the subs and the drums and the way that everything fits together is so modern and brilliant. Um, it takes what you promised in the beginning, like I said, and takes all the experience and sort awesome. of connects the two points. That's awesome. Um, but it's it's hugely grand in terms of its ambition, its track listing, the messages, what you're trying to say, everything is connected. It's, dare I say, my friends, a bit of a rock opera. <laughs> oh, no, cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. What were you writing about at that time, and what I, what are we listening to? What are the overarching themes? I mean, we're streaming the apocalypse. We're on the verge of some m- massive change. Yeah, 
I mean, to me, uh, every September I get like a weird gut feeling about mortality and the way the world, like my place in the world and my, um, my therapist was like, it's, it's matriculation. So you don't really feel it on January 1st. You feel it when like everybody starts school again and the year starts again. And I was like, I'm like my dad's age like when he was when I thought he had it all figured out and like yeah. my parents are starting to look like my grandparents and my kids are like the age that I, I was you know and this is just I guess how the world goes on but I was thinking about it in terms of and we sampled him but I was thinking about it in terms of Ethan Hawke's speech in Reality Bites where he talks about this pink seashell and how he his dad you know he never really knew his dad and his dad gave him the pink seashell and he went there this all the answers in the universe and he goes i guess there's no answers so there's this kind of like mm. the idea that there nothing matters you know what i mean like none of it matters and and that was a weird message for me like i was like i can't i don't think we can bake that into the whole record because i've heard records like that that's been said before but then i was watching uh field of dreams and in that he he makes a similar reference where he's like he's like my dad was an old man before i even got to know who he was and he was he was just already old and i never did one he never did one crazy thing so the reason he went out and built the field in the grass is because he was doing a crazy thing. Because that's what breaks you out of the pink seashell thing, yeah, you know. Yeah, like, and yeah. we all should be doing stuff like that. Like, turn left when you think you should turn right, you know. Like, and and to me, in ways, a lot of this record was, and a lot of like Patrick, a lot of Patrick's job with me beyond words is like interpreting because I. You know, like I must have eaten too many um, like like lead paint when I was a kid or something like all my stuff is like a little bit off, you know, like how I see movies and how I hear music. It's all like a little not correct. So I'll tell Patrick, I'm like, what if it was like this mixed with this and like anyone else on the planet would be like, that makes zero sense. You're not speaking like an artist. You don't know what you're talking, you know, and but Patrick's like, oh, do you mean this? And I'm like, eh, exactly. And then he, the next iteration is exactly what I meant. Yeah, it's and it's kind of it gets to this kind of twin speak thing where like now now I understand his thing enough where so I was talking about this someone was asking me about this like because you know they're like well so when you when you use his words you you use all the words he sends like I'm like it's hard to it's really hard to describe the way Pete writes because it's like living in his brain for a minute like there's, it's not really like it's not linear at it's all. not linear it's not like he doesn't sit down and write songs he just writes thoughts and you find all these thoughts, and then so, so a lot of times I'm taking whole, you know, stanzas or whatever, but then sometimes I have to move things around, and every so often I have to I have to add some connective tissue, you know, a couple words here, and he knows every... It's weird, because you don't remember. It's the, weir it's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. He doesn't know which, which words he wrote and, does, and didn't write, but every time he's like, if you add a non-Pete word, he's like, I gotta change that. I don't want to remember that. And, <laughs> and, and it's like, and, and, uh, totally but, I'm, totally but right. I'm talking like thes and ands, like he, like every, everything, there's a feeling. And so it's weird because now because I Because it doesn't fit into your idea of what, of what the, of what the poetic, the poetic yes. result is. Yes. Right. It, it's too connective. Yes. And there's, yes. Is that totally, right? Yeah. A hundred percent. And there's certain words that just don't make sense to fall out boy. And there's certain words that and just don't, don't make sense to that me. He doesn't like, say. So, so now it's one of those things where now I, I've gotten better at it where w with connective stuff, I'm like, I'm how like, do, how do I do this? It, this is, this is how Pete would say that. You know, like, it, was, it was like back in the day, it was like, Patrick's like, what's the difference between cr cry and weep? I will kill you. Like this, they're the oh, same yeah. thing. I'm going to kill you yeah, right so, now. <laughs> so this was back when I would try to write the lyrics. Um, we would get into these, these arguments because I was all about the aesthetic. The, the, I really like alliteration. I really like the the sound of words. I like you know chewing on words and the way that the rhythm flows and all those things. So the the sound of it is very very important to me. And and I would have you know this this line where you know every you know with the again the alliteration and the rhythm and everything was locked. And Pete would be like, no, you got to change that one word. And I'm like. And, and and you would submit like you'd be like change this one word to forty words. Yes, and <laughs> lots of times. Yeah, and and, uh, and I'd be like, I have the opposite. I don't really care at all about how it sounds. You yeah. know what I mean? I do, or like the phrasing doesn't really matter to me. You know, so like those two things are always at odds with each other. So it's it, but it's interesting because the the odds that you that you're both perfectly describing are so integral to what makes Fallout Boy exciting mm. because. Your desire to create linear flow and your desire to completely reverse engineer a statement or a word or a feeling and over describe it is the reason why my songs know what you 
dead in the dark. It's the reason why, you know, the scene is seen, seen it's a goddamn arms race. Totally. It's the reason why these statements become mantras that people tattoo on their fucking body because no one else thought of them. And you, yeah. and this gets back to you now, man, you sing them. And I'm just going to say it, man. I don't think there's anyone on the planet who could have, have actually performed over this music mm. on this album. Mm. It would Agreed. have swallowed everybody up eventually. Agreed. By, by song seven or song eight, it just would have swallowed everybody up. And you just fucking dominate it, man. I don't know how you do it, but you just, <laughs> but you just somehow, they can't throw enough at you. I, I don't know. Do you know what I mean, Pete? Yeah, yeah 100%. And, and on that level, I do think it's like, a, like an athletic thing. He just do, He's able to just do it. He like everyone just, else is in the locker room and he's still running yeah, plays. Totally. He steps up to the, the mic and he just does it. And you're like, I would never expect, I would have never expected it the first time we met because of your personality and the way you carry yourself. <laughs> but like you, it's like, yeah, it's, it's You know athletic. when people say that guy could sing a fucking recipe? <laughs> oh no that guy could sing a fucking recipe and you'd still fucking love it pie crust apples granulated sugar brown sugar flour cinnamon nutmeg lemon egg i don't know whatever it's it's early i'm not i'm not belting this shit <laughs> i mean you gotta be you... needed for making a pie yes he is <laughs> 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 Nine inch pie plate rolling pin. I don't know. Amazing. I think but we've. Fucking I, I think we've discovered your your YouTube channel. Just for the record. <laughs> oh, dude, that's a great fucking idea. I'm, I'm Patrick sings recipes. I'm around. No, but it, but it is. You a say thing. I'm around. <laughs> it is a thing though, man. There's like no I feel like it. there's something in when you love the sound of words. Because that's the thing that uh, that gets me. That's the thing that grabs me is the sound of words. And it's one of the reasons why I can... But by the way, it's the same for him. It's just different, coming from a different place. But, I, I, yep. but it is coming from a different place. And that's, why, and that's one of the things that I found early on. We weren't going to get there by discussing it. I, if I find... If I wait for the rhythm from him, because he doesn't mean to have rhythm. That's the thing that's so strange yeah, is, that, yeah. is that he doesn't mean to have rhythm in the thing. So then I find these 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 syncopations and I'm like, that's amazing. Like it's so it's so when you're writing from a place of not and that's I've every so often there are things that work. And I ask people to, you know, and, and I, people ask me, you know, how, how do you do what you do or whatever? And I'm like, try this. I swear to God, try this. And no one wants to do it. And this is one of the things I've always said in songwriting is try writing the words first and not thinking about the, the music at all. Because, because, you know, you do this, we all do this thing when we're writing a song and you think about the melody and you kind of, you kind of start humming over the thing and you start, you know, you play around or whatever. And, and you're going to put in words. Sometimes we have words that we go to as filler. Sometimes we have words we don't mean to go to, but yep. whatever. Natural intonation games, yeah. all that stuff. And it's cool. And you get some interesting things that way. But the way that the way that Pete writes, I would totally freely tell anybody to try and write that way. Just write your thoughts. I don't know, Pete. I don't know, because you know <laughs> one of my favorite songs on here is Fake Out, right? Mm. And I think... Take nine... Cut through the darkness, castle temp red wine. But I made no plans, and none can be broken. Remember us just like this forever. Actually, it does fucking work, you know? <laughs> no, but that's. That I was, kinda, that was kind of tight. There was, like a, was, there was like a Dylan ish yeah, yeah, vibe yeah, yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but my point being that, like, you, no one can just do that shit. Like, I'm reading this, like. Love is in the air, I just gotta figure out a window to break out. Like, yeah. how the fuck do you get that in a song without mm. taking up at least eight bars? Mm. Like, it's, I know, by the way, fully aware that we're in absolute major nerd out mode. Yeah, no, sh but we should be. But the good news is, is that if you're as big a Fallout Boy fan as I am, this is fucking gold dust. This is heaven, <laughs> Iowa, right now. So, so you know, for, so, so, for, so for me, it's like, whatever the fuck ever, like, the way it works for you two, it it's just entirely unique. We we were we were texting each other the other day. Like it's weird sometimes being us because we're we're really similar dudes, completely wildly different dudes. You know what I mean? And and um and every so often you look at each other and you're like, if we were one guy, 
<laughs> you know, like that'd be like a, that'd be an incredible dude. I was know? thinking the same thing about 20 minutes ago. I was yeah. like, you're sort of the perfect one person. Yeah. <laughs> but, totally. but, but here's the thing about one person who has both of these abilities in equal measure. They'll go crazy. Go crazy. Easily. Yeah. No question. And I think that's one of the things that you'd never be able to switch it off. And I think it's great because we, we kind of catch each other. There's been times where both of us have been kind of off a little bit and you, and you have somebody else to be like, to be like, yeah, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What, <laughs> yeah. Don't do sugar again. You know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the two of you as a writing team is incredible. You could, there was no fallout boy without Andy and Joe, but I want to ask you like, okay, so we've had conversations together multiple times. I mean, this is, we've been doing this for 20 odd years. What is fallout? What is the fallout boy experience for them? Because I never see them. Mm. We, never, <laughs> we never talk. Mm. I don't take it personally. I, this happens a lot in the arts. Some people just don't do it for that reason. I think that our issue um, will tend to be more like it's. It started with, and I, I would assume that all bands are like this. When we do photo shoots, we literally would have to swap heads because someone's eyes would always be closed. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like it's like probably when you have your kids or whatever. Like yeah, you yeah. can't like getting One of them's four in a bad people mood is like time. it's impossible. Yeah. It's very difficult. I think to interview the four of us we're like we everybody's talking and talking over each other and and it really makes sense in our van and in the bus because like that's just how we we it's kind of like an ever going conversation where it goes to marvel movies and to music and, Star and, to, Wars you know, and, and hardcore whatever. bands and to, yeah. you know whatever and it's yeah. just like a it's like a, a group chat but we say it out loud to each other or whatever yeah. you know um why wouldn't that be fun for me it might be fun for you. I think you're the. I, I think yeah, you're I, the guy who could. You I could maybe you the could one. wrangle. You could break this stallion. I yeah, think. Yeah, because you know what? I would talk over all of you at the same time, so yeah. it would be exactly. No, the it's same. great. Yeah. I, I I agree with that because I feel like that was one of the things when we used to do interviews and they would have all four of us. It would be it. It was fun, but it was chaos. I mean, but I wonder, sort of like, okay, if they don't have this part of the job, and and I'm sure there's other things that they don't do that you do, like writing lyrics necessarily. Maybe they do at times. I don't know, but I mean, primarily we know we know you as the lyric writer, you as the melody, and 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 the and the, and the musician who puts everything together. With that, it's a band. Right. What is it to them? You you can look back at their experience just a little bit. Totally. What is Fall Out Boy for them? I think that at least from Fall Out Boy 2.0, like when we came back after the break. It was interesting to see all of us as... I forgot you took a break. Yeah. Okay, no. All of us as adults, you know, like, so everybody's got kids. Everybody has, you know, a mortgage. Uh, well, Andy doesn't have kids, but every, mm. you know, he's got three chihuahuas or, you know, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but it was interesting to see everybody as an adult and everybody had kind of like filled in areas that were blank previously because we, you know, lived in a van for, you know, eight years straight or lived in a bus, you know, out of suitcases. So there's parts of your life that were blank you know what i mean like and you never filled in because they weren't necessary to promote the music yeah. or to you know they weren't a part of it so like everybody kind of filled those areas in and for me at least i think it was cool to see everybody like i was like oh this is like andy's not like the guy that we drew snakes on each other's necks that you know or whatever he's like grown he's like a man now you know what i mean he you has can like, see a future yeah, yeah. Of, of maturity for for everybody to, yeah. and, and, and the band still is relevant totally yeah and i think that joe uh, on this record, he really stepped up and wrote. Yeah, Joe. It was interesting because that's another thing. Joe. Joe is a is kind of a, a conundrum, right? Because he's this he's this really talented. I mean, he's a he's a brilliant writer, brilliant player. But Pete and I became the the team, and it wasn't really a plan. It just kind of that's just kind of how it happened, right? And then we come back after like it's weird because the break it wasn't that long a break or whatever, but for some reason it's this like flashpoint for the band, right? We come back and we're like, okay, probably well, the note we put on the internet that was like, we're taking a break. We're we don't know if we'll be back. I it's bet. so funny, man, because I, I I say the same thing to every one of my friends who's in a band who is an artist who does that. I'm like, don't do that. No, and, and the thing <laughs> not is, necessary. I didn't necessary. Not necessary. Well, Life goes on, man. I didn't say it. No, it was just in interviews because we. We didn't we we didn't really have a plan. We didn't yeah, clear yeah. it with each other, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's fair. But, yeah, that's fair. But um, you come back from the flash. You come point. back from the thing, and Joe is this like fully formed writer with a with a very distinct. I mean, he has one of the most distinctive writing voices. When I hear his parts, when I hear his ideas, I would I I could pick him out of a crowd. Like I know the way Joe writes. It's and it's very it's very Joe, right? And. Um, then we had to kind of retrofit and figure out how to 
bring him into it. Because it's like now, now you know, all the egos are 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 cooled. Everybody is like, fr- you know, friends again and really whatever. But now we have to figure out creatively how you incorporate. We were friends for a little bit. We were. I don't know. I thought. I thought Jesus. we were cool. And then you. Jesus. You know. We might need that Metallica therapist. No, no, no. But I feel like the. I feel like the. <laughs> look, we didn't talk very much during that kidding. during that break. It wasn't not. It wasn't not friends. But like. I was just kidding. Patrick. No, but I. But I, you know, people. The, the people. The people want to know. <laughs> but um, <laughs> my life had blo- at, during that time. My life had blown up completely. You know, like I got divorced. Realized I didn't really like how famous I was didn't like love who I was would go like I, I started you know like I'd fly without the band and I'd be like how do you even get through the airport because I just follow a fucking backpack through the air- a security guy's backpack through the airport so I don't even really like so like I'd atrophied basic yeah arrested development or, yeah it and was like, stuff I just yeah. didn't even get because you didn't you, you didn't need it you know what I mean so and also you were coming out of a heady time like people got to remember when you guys were around and successful for the first time that was like a 4.0 sunset strip experience yeah totally. it was why wi- it's totally. weird to like look totally. back on now that was dark tower paparazzi shit no totally. it was f- so pa- uh, paparazzi um broke down uh neil's gate to his house when we were working on yeah. foley like it was like that degree of like of like chaos of yeah, like, and by the way how the fuck do you know what's going to happen so here we go hey we're ambitious oh shit it's kind of working oh shit we work with the right person oh shit we have a hit oh shit hits matter in this era of like here comes social media before that here's the paparazzi they feed the media mm. oh shit i'm really successful oh shit i really like this girl she's famous oh shit 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 the next thing you know oh shit totally <laughs> and i think that like so for me i needed to take time to just like become a real person you know what I mean like I didn't like I didn't like any of that I didn't like any of the things that the trappings that came with it you know what I mean did you not like it for him or him uh because you I I feel like you yeah didn't want to know about it I didn't I hated all of it from like the word go because the thing was for me all of it took away I, this is so, this sounds so cliche matter, but but it is very earnest for me is the only reason i'm here is music that's yeah, that's man. what i want to do i don't care about any of the rest of it yeah. literally that's none actually, of the rest ironically of it. not the cliche the cliche is the other <laughs> yeah. shit. but i'm saying but i feel like people say that yeah. but i mean i i i genuinely i just enjoy the making of it i don't even i there are there is a great joy to playing a show and having people respond to it, that is not even the thing that gets me. I, I like the creating of, of music. I, I have to be in a studio and I have to be working. And the the thing, the like, you know, the you, you'd have to go to this party or this meeting or this thing. It all started, to, this photo shoot, every day, it was like, you know, I want to be in a studio. I want to be working. I want to be composing. That's what I, that's what I get up for. And, and I couldn't do I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't do all the other stuff. I couldn't do all the like, you know, the lights and the thing and the red carpet and the, you know, and and um, and Pete got thrown into it. I, I think it's weird watching it from the outside. And then you what you asked, it was really upsetting actually because I feel like Pete is an interesting dude. You know, whatever you talked about me singing, I'll talk about you. Pete's an interesting person and always was. And that's not always a thing that you choose, right? That's not always a put on, right? Pete walks into a room when he's having a good day or a bad day and people look at him, right? And it's one of these things that you, you, so then all of a sudden you have all this attention on you and, and it's like, you have two choices. Either you embrace it or you reject it. If you embrace it, it's like, oh, look at this guy. If you reject it, it's like, oh, this guy, you know? So there's really no right answer and all of it sucks. And we were like in the depths of that where like everywhere we went it was like this whole thing right everything was a thing and like I don't know and 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 I was like I man I just I'm just here to sing some stuff and play some instruments like this is wow this is like so beyond I didn't sign up for this you know and and you got to think that at this point also music became four on the floor dance music that's mm -hmm. like or like pop music it was yeah very but, but but you can exist in that world i'm not worried about that i mean you guys make dance records uh, it, that's mm. and also you, you're ex, and people know this now i would have said maybe 
five to eight years ago, the biggest trick Fall Out Boy played on anybody is that you're not one of the most innovative, <laughs> forward-thinking <laughs> bands on the Thanks. planet. I think everybody knows that now. Maybe. I think you've done enough. Yeah, I think everybody knows that now. So that's not the thing. I just want to credit you for a second for beautifully and eloquently describing what everybody got wrong, which is that it you're broke a my heart. It yeah. broke my heart to watch people say that stuff because yeah. I'm like, because he doesn't, it's, look, like I said, there are days where he chooses it. It's not, a, it wasn't always a choice. And when it's not always, and then you don't get to turn it off either. When you're, when you're famous, when that, when that bell lights off, that's it. And you're stuck with it. And so everywhere we went for like a few years, it was like, it was a, it was a. And I was going to say, you, know, you, you can't get through that wall. Once that wall surrounds him. How the fuck are you going to get through to your buddy? And and, and he would reach out. Because by the way, at that time, you're probably high as yeah. well. Yeah, for sure. Because you're like, distraction, distraction. What the fuck do I have to do to even just survive this shit? For sure. So, I mean, I can't imagine how hard it was for you and the guys to have to deal with that. It time. sucked. It, it super sucked. Because it was one of those things where, um, you know, like I said... I feel like a uh, part of my role is to like tell his story. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm a composer. That's what I like to do. I, where I work in movies and I work on shows and I work on Pete, right? Like Pete tells, you know, has a story that needs music. And if he's removed from himself, you know I mean? If he's not even able to access himself because he's behind all of this stuff. He, what story can you what, tell? I don't have a story. Yeah. So, so not only was I, not only did I not have my buddy, like, which was heartbreaking in its own way, but then I also don't have a purpose as a, as an artist. You know what I mean? Like that was, that was rough, <laughs> you know, like, like, cause, cause like I said, that's, that's like, that's what gets me out of bed in the morning, you know, to like do a thing. And, and back to this record, I mean, it was like, these were lyrics that got me out of bed. That was like the whole thing, you know? And that's what this album sounds like to me is it sounds like the rest of the beginning of the rest of your journey. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's like, it just, man, it, it, it just takes no fucking prisoners. And, um, and it's just so full of ideas and so full of emotions and so full of performance and everyone's just fighting to just, oh, we're going to fucking kick down every wall in front of us. Well, and then, and back to your, you know, your point about Joe and Andy too, there was a thing where, um, you know, I think a Andy's, a Andy's always kind of in, you know, Andy's always, Andy is very, he's consummate. His drums are ripping on the record. They're ripping! amazing. But I'm saying, but Andy, Andy shows up. Andy's ready to play. Andy likes playing, so he's happy to play. But like when you get that guy happy to play, <sighs> when you like when you give him a thing and he's like amped yeah, to play, yeah, it's yeah. this other level. Yeah. And and Troman, it was like he there are these moments on the record where he got he got so excited. And it's it's different when everybody there's um um I uh, Sidney Lumet said about filmmaking that that the biggest compliment filmmakers can give each other when they're working together is we're making the same movie, right? And that's that's what it felt like is that we all all of a sudden we're making the same record, you know? And and that's this thing that like, you know, you can't bottle that. Like I I I I'm not proud of I'm not a person that is very proud of things. That's not the way I operate. I'm really proud of this record. Oh, you, you know should I mean? be. It's incredible. And and by the way, it, it sort of touches on all of the things that only you could do. Like there isn't a band on the planet that could take on Earth, Wind, and Fire like you did on, on, on What a Time to Be Alive. That was, that was a hard sell, by the way. That was a, that was a, a Patrick special. I had, to, I had to bring everybody along I mean, kicking and screaming for that one at first. Oh, it's so fucking good, though, because, because you haven't felt that good listening to a song for a long time. It's like it's unashamedly like, oh, right. And, and by the way. But by the way, I know... And I know the sting in the tail on that song. Yeah, yeah. I know it's not yeah, yeah. just September. I know that there's a lot of, you know, we're streaming the apocalypse. I get it. <laughs> but also, Patrick sent me that song in like, to me, the most bleak moment of the pandemic. So it was interesting. No, I sent you that song before the pandemic. Oh. You, th rem remember, that was, that's the thing that's so crazy about that song. Is, that was so, before the pandemic. So, it was, the song it was is, like a dark moment, I feel song, like you said. Maybe I was listening to it during the pandemic. It was, it was, there were, there were a couple other dark things that happened in the world before COVID. Facts. It wasn't just COVID. Got it. So, Got it. so, Facts. but um, I sent you the beginning of that song uh, then, and then, and it was weird because as we're working on, that was one of the things that was so brutal about that song. As we're working on that song. Yeah. 
more and more bad things happen. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> and then and then all of a sudden we're in the, we're in quarantine and you're like I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. hey, here we are now. Yeah. It was yeah. interesting to like listen to that in your house when you're like Oh, only one person can go to the grocery store right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but 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 I mean, even in its finished in its finished uh, uh, framework, is its finished body, it's doom dancing. I mean, that's what you do. You doom dance. I wanted. I, mean, I, I wanted like to write. Up boys always doom dancing. <laughs> totally. I wanted to write the saddest, most desperate song that you could hear at a wedding, <laughs> and then make people dance at it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's so twisted. How's the rest of your life? I mean, how does how does life work? Now that you do all have families and you're all mature and you're all figuring out like how you want to, you need space to learn. <clears throat> As you get older, you need space, inter- internal space and external space to actually keep growing. Otherwise, to your point, it just becomes, becomes rote, right? Yeah, that was, that was the thing that I was worried about is because you can just make records to make records, you know, and, and I didn't. I didn't want. I don't ever want to do that again. I think that's the thing is that I was like, I hit Ooh, again. P- when did you do that at all? No, no, no. I'm just, I'm saying like, no, we didn't. We didn't ever do that. But I'm saying I don't ever want to. F- yeah, well, you know what? We always show up. We've always showed up and always done what we're what we intend to do. But there is an element of you know management and label being like, hey, so is there a record? You know, and and there's that kind of momentum behind you. I'm never gonna let that be wind in my sails again. I want to, I want to let it come from this thing because, cause, um, it, I like, sorry, that wasn't your question. This is not related to your question at all. Matter. I don't but, think that way, but, but I like him. I just, I think, I don't think linear do. <laughs> yeah. I didn't um, even prepare a question. We're on different timelines. This is, we're watching Loki right now. Um, but, uh, I, uh, yeah, I wanted to, I, I, that was a whole thing with this record is that like, I just, I'm not doing that not with this, you know, like, and it's, there's something about the stuff we've done in the interim, you know, um, Joe's been working on, uh, writing for, for TV and stuff. And he wrote his book and, and I've been scoring, I've been doing, uh, you know, I've been composing for film and TV for like eight years or whatever. And, and, um, that there are deadlines in that there's work in that there's notes in that You're on the job, and, and it's rewarding and great, but it made me see the way that this needs to not be anything like that. There's something special about this that can't be, this can't be, you know, notes. This can't be, like, this has to be passionate and art. Full you know? purpose. Yeah. Full purpose. You know, you talked about the cyclical environment that music tends to exist in and even in this world where it's timeline based and the cycle is constantly moving it's not like we could shift it like we used to 20 years ago (laughs) we're shifting it six inches that way Mm. it's dance Mm. you know it's it's everything all the time yeah which is great news because now you go you know uh when we were young festival you've got these things that are saying hey yeah there's fucking there's fuel in the in the tank with these bands we used to always like fall out boy i think we had a lot of like you know we were super into metal. We were into reggae. We were into ska. We were into these certain movies and all this stuff. And so, like the the everything everywhere really benefits a band like us because we've always restrained that stuff. Yeah. Like when we bring it into things, people yeah. are like, well, "Why do you want Jay Z on a record?" You know, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, you know, which is an insane question to ask anybody. You know, but like, <laughs> yeah, no, but, I, but 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 at the same time, Jay Z now is an insane question. But Jay Z back then, when he was at his height as an MC, people wanted to keep the genre separate. Totally. Yeah, and it's weird looking back on that. I mean, the advent of record stores, and you used to have you know sections, and this yeah. was the section of the record store where you would find the rock records, and this was the section where you find the hip hop records, and this was the section where you. And, and all of that melted away. And, um, I think we had the blind luck of being, Did we, be- would play, we would play like, not to step over you, but no, no. we play like radio shows, right? So we play like a modern rock radio show and we're the only band not selling a black t-shirt and they're like, who's this band? And then we played like the, the, the jingle balls, like the, the pop ones. And we're like fucking slayer. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, yeah. a, it's a, it was always a very interesting existence. No. Yeah, and, yeah. and the thing that was weird about it was because to the point about the restraint, that's been a thing that was always there from the beginning that I think, um, wait, what restraint? I don't the, the, think the of kind of, we were, I, I wasn't trying <laughs> to that word factor into your, <laughs> yeah, yeah. into your fucking I, I wasn't trying to sing, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. Right. 
Um, and the first, the first couple records, I was really scared of, of it because there was kind of a blueprint of like how pop punk and emo bands sang. Uh, I'm glad you're going right? here because I was about to go yeah. here too. Go and I was, there. so I was scared. So I kind of, I kind of, they kind of had to pull me out a little bit. Like, so there's, it's the silliest little moment, but Saturday, Saturday is a funny song for us. This is a song on our, on Take This to Your Grave, like yeah, yeah. first record. Um, and it's this little little song, but there's a couple moments on it that I was so. It's weird looking back now how terrified I was of it. There's a little breakdown before the chorus that's kind of a hip hop beat, and it's really small. And I don't think anyone would even track it as a hip hop beat now. But at the time, I was like, it's not, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, I'm, well, I'm going to be hurt. Yeah, and I was really scared. I was scared that that you know this wasn't going to be cool. Everyone was going to be mad at me for for letting it out. And then I do this. I hit I hit this falsetto note in the song and that I was like you know I did it once in rehearsal and I was like oh I gotta you know I don't want to I, I shouldn't have done that and everyone's like no no no, do it do it and so there was a lot of a lot of it was them it was all of us letting each other kind of like no it's okay we don't have to do the thing we don't have to be yeah but when you did that right people realize well they're not playing in our sandbox they're not dumbing down their abilities or just playing to their abilities because they don't have that ability they're doing like something they're, they're pushing the buttons they were given and not apologizing for it and from there we get panic kims it all starts to build on top of this like fuck apologizing for what we do this is what we do and i do trace it back to a moment like that because you did start a train <laughs> don't you, you do know that right I, i'm too scared to do that on purpose but yeah but you do know that looking back on it that i'm gonna fucking say you ready for this Oof. Uh oh you're the emo blueprint <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah. you are in a way and i say that without any sense of irony or sarcasm or, or or judgment i mean that is a beloved fucking thing yeah. like people love emotion in music you yeah. can shorten it and call you what you want wear what you want market how the fuck you want right but you guys came out and went, we are unapologetically emotional, not only in our words, but in our delivery. That was Pete. I don't think we could have done that without him because I feel like we, I feel like especially then, um, like, you know, I was, Joe and I were like little kids, you know, <laughs> and like, and I was very scared. You know, I couldn't even, you know, t talk on stage or anything. I yeah. you know, I remember interviewing yeah. you in the early days and it was, I felt like every time I asked you a question, I was bullying you. Yeah, no, it was horrifying, <laughs> man. I, I'm not, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what, what was it that man, you know, no, but um, oh, hey, man. Oh, yeah. 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 Is, you, to, the late great Mark Lanigan said that again. to me once. I was talking to Josh Homme at this particular tone. I said, what about you, Mark? And he went, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, um, but yeah, I mean, it's we wear it. We were very scared, and somehow Pete had like the right kind of confidence and like resolve. And so, like, we would go in and you know, it because it, I don't think you know, it, it, in another life where I didn't have a Pete, if I wrote a song, because I because sa sa Saturday I, I wrote most of that by my I did write yeah. most of that by myself, yeah. right? And so there's a there's a world where that song exists without the band. There's no world where where I sing it in front of people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like it, it, without Pete, because I feel like it was it was so much of the like because I don't know what it was or if that was just you and you just felt and you just felt comfortable or if there was like a fire under your ass like no we're, no I'm gonna do this. And I remember the moment for me was Arms Race, the day that my producer came in and said Fallout Boy are back and played. I am an arms dealer. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sorry, what are we actually listening to right now? Like, what what do we even call this? Yeah. Like, I'm used to like, you know, the whole, <laughs> you know, like, oh man, everyone's hitting the right notes. Not that. I'm not, I'm not fucking expecting that shit. And then I get to the lyrics and I'm like, oh, Pete's going off. <laughs> like, Pete is just... <laughs> on the whole fucking thing. Yeah. He's trying to he's trying to blow it up. Yeah. Totally. I think that we after take this to your grave, we kind of made a decision. I don't even know if we really talked about it, but we decided like we're going to we're going to grow on every record. Like we're go we're not I think there was a chance where we could have made take this to your grave 
part two. Yeah, we, we, we wouldn't we we have had part sugar. three and then we part four and then part five. We wouldn't part, be here. No, we yeah. wouldn't be here. And so we really leaned in and, and did make that decision. And that's where that birthed arms race, that birthed Uma Thurman. Yeah, I don't think light him up. Any of thanks stuff. for the memory. You know, because it was like when you're when you're free from all that, you can discover all this other shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And here's the good news. Guess who's calling you the next day? Jay Z is going. Yo, that song's fucking off the hook. I bet you we did. Or around that time, it was it was around that time. He's calling up, going, "You guys are doing the right thing because you're not doing what everyone else is fucking doing." Totally. I think I want to work with you. There's (laughs) there's another thing also like where, and I think I can't remember what comedian said this, but like when you're a famous comedian, they said you get one one free minute on stage. So like you get one minute where you can just be totally bombing, and you're so famous that it doesn't really matter. Okay, yeah. And that's like I feel like the spirit of Arms Race and some of those songs was like we got a free fucking minute. We better like let it rip on this thing. You know what I mean? (laughs) And back to that, back to that, like the the Titanic or the Moon. You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) No, and and back to that kind of anxiety you were talking. about about that kind of like um you know you're still scared of getting fired you know even no matter say, what this is the theme but, of the whole the, fucking band no, it yeah. is and, and it, every night before we put every time before we put out a record or we put out a song <laughs> i call the night before and i'm like i'm not sure we should be doing yeah, this. yes i, it, I waver i waver at the last minute that's very like before true save rock and roll and my songs i was like i'm not sure and then somehow <laughs> i talked this dude down um uh, but but to that thing, yeah. there's there's a it, it, we did have a talk on Cork Tree because Cork Tree was the major label record, and, you know, like a major label debut. And again, a lot of bands sink after that. But I was like, what if we don't? What if we actually work? Where do we go? And and I look back on it, and it's kind of a quaint amount of change, you know, when I really think about it. But at the time, I was like, you you kind of pushed. You said at one point, Arms you're Race like, is the most. I'm quoting JD, mm. but like is one of the most bizarre yeah. pop songs. Who said that? Uh, our, our, our friend John. Yeah. yeah, he he was like it is. He he was like he's like that's the weirdest song, song to, to ever top, be on top, top party radio. You know what I mean? No, no, no. I, I'm gonna go even a step further than JD. Then in that case, I I, th- I think it like for the first 15 seconds, the first time I heard that, I was like, is everyone in the same key? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because it's like the bass is doing one thing, you're singing another thing, and then comes this guitar, it's like wow, 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 like a wow, wow, wow. I'm like, yo, they just fucking take four separate tracks and put them together. Like, what the so, fuck? So, so from under the cork tree was big enough that we got asked to perform live at the AMAs, you know. Yeah. So we're there in front of all these like <laughs> yeah. famous people, yeah, yeah, and like, yeah. like we're up there, and we have these giant, people, you know? uh, these 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 giant grasshoppers because they were on the album cover and we were like, we need them for the live performance. So these, these giant grasshoppers that make no fucking sense. We're playing the song and it's like the moment in Back to the Future where he starts really <laughs> shredding and everyone's like, I guess and you, he's like, I guess you're not ready for that yet. <laughs> you, literally it's it. like that. It's, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's it, amazing! It was. Do it, you remember who you saw in the crowd when you realized that didn't quite land the way I thought it was going to be? I feel like I remembered watching because Snoop had performed what "Drop It Like It's Hot." Yeah, yeah it was like that. And era. there were these l- ladies who. I think uh, to me, I was like, they look like they're not into music, but they were like doing his dance, whatever the right, dance right, was right, from right, the video. Right, right. And so I was like, they really are keyed into pop moments. I remember when we were playing, I was looking at them and they were either blank or aghast. You know what I mean? Like, just like, <laughs> nah. I just remember the stage manager. The stage manager, we worked with him a few times. He was a good guy. But I remember the stage manager being like, l- like looking over at us like, what are you doing? Like, the, <laughs> there's this moment because we had the, because we had the crickets up there and, and. The fucking crickets. It's yeah, a, and, and literally, by the way, of all the things you could put in a costume, a fucking cricket. No, but get this. So, they're, so Pete had this idea. It's just <laughs> no, no, no. They're, they're stage prop. They were like giant oh, crickets. Were, giant crickets. Just and on so, a stage. So we were gonna walk out to the sound of literal crickets. That would have right? cost like Dude. a quarter of a million dollars. So, as well, right? so <laughs> ridiculous. Can you imagine being a, <laughs> so ridiculous? Can you imagine being the producers on that show and and the and artist like, telling you, okay, so we want we say, want literal dead air with crickets? Did they say crickets? And so we walk out. We walk out. Don't even know what a cricket is. And the and the 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 producer, you know, we're we're doing the show, or whatever, and and I look over at the producer, and he was like, just he, you know, he turned white. He's like, this, I'm gonna get fired for this. It's fucking epic. Right. When was the last time we got? We, I mean, longer than I think. Lo- longer than I think for sure. Yeah, totally. I know, cause you, cause you, cause you, you keep giving us these great moments, right? Oh, we got a song. Like how many times we hung out? And it's like we got a song. Where's the album? It's like oh, we just got a song. Right. You know, oh, we're going on tour. Yeah. Cool, we got an album. No, nah, I'm just going on tour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. we know you and we continue to know you. So we don't take this for granted. And um, 
and just in, as an existence, but people, I think it should all be events. You know what I mean? Like people, I really this is think a when, fucking you put, event. when you put an album out, it should be an event. It shouldn't just be like, eh, if this one misses, we're going to drop another one in six months to me for our band. You know what I mean? Like I want it to be solid. You know what I mean? It, it's amazing because that, I think <laughs> that's the thing. Solid. <laughs> you think this is solid? But that's you know, I use thing. solid as the closest thing to being unhappy in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I go, solid. it's solid. Solid. So it's, I'm not unhappy. It's solid. <laughs> this is not a fucking solid, solid album. Thanks, this man. is a Appreciate crazy it. fucking I album. I think the thing that works about it is is exactly what Pete just said. Like there's a, there's a magic to it where where you're trying to make events and I'm trying to like I'm like shit if this is the last one we ever do you know before they before they fire me you know like so so it's like the combination of that like you know that like pressure on both sides you know I just um whatever it is you may never fully understand it and we may never get to the bottom of it no matter how many hours we spend talking about it but when we hear it it's in full evidence and it really is on this album and there's so much going on here that we're that people are going to love and you know the whole fuel by ramen thing just makes total sense. everything just yeah. feels right for the future and that's the thing i'm most excited about for you is that i think you know okay we know what it feels like to play an open air stadium again that was fun Okay, we now have arguably our biggest, most cohesive, ambitious sounding album for a very long time done. That's fun. Oh, we're on a label now that is a legacy label and no one's going to call time on us at Ramen. Yeah. So that's cool. Dude, it was so interesting before we... <laughs> you sort of built a perfect environment for yourselves. You know? so, yeah, before we re-signed with Fuel by uh, Johnny Minardi, a guy that we've known for 20 years who was you know, from the same little scene as us, he, uh, he would like text me you know, once a week, once every two weeks. He was like... You guys out of your deal? You, you want to go have lunch? Do you want to? Is, is Patrick? Smart. You know, and smart. It's it's cool to be back at that home again. It, uh, it's it's also really weird when we say I don't know how to quantify it for people, but like Johnny was at like you know when we would play like a this you know coffee place. You know, like we were like. Well, what's like, beautiful about the fact that he's reaching out to you at, at now? Yeah, he is, still cares. He still that fucking yeah. cares. Yeah. He's still thinking about how can I get closer to totally. the guys? How totally. can I get back in their world? It's also That's cool epic. that he's just reaching out. I remember in, we were talking about the times in like 2010 or whatever where it was like heady times. I was trying to be an adult again. I actually texted my manager and was like, do people still email each other? Because I just wasn't getting any fucking emails. <laughs> and he was like... Yeah, I think maybe they don't, you know, <laughs> oh, so sweet about it. <laughs> that's maybe the saddest question anybody could ever ask anybody at that oh, point in their sad, life. Sad, man. Is anybody, do, do, do friends I mean, still play together? <laughs> hey, um, is that a thing that they so, still do? This is a weird question, but was there like a global outrage on the email <laughs> server over the last, I don't know, six months? <laughs> Have you gotten like zero emails or is it just me? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man. Love you guys. Thanks for, thanks for, thanks for over delivering. Thanks, man. It's it's cool to dig in deep with you. Yeah, good it's to fun. see you. Yeah. yeah, well, let's continue. We're still here.